All right, so while we wait for those pieces to cure, we're going to move on to the cockpit. So basically, when you're fitting any of these cockpits, guys, take your time and plan this out ahead of time if you can. So with, so with the Skymaster cockpit, you've got a few different pieces. Obviously, you've got the primary cockpit. You've got... You've got the actual canopy portion. Now this is pretty straightforward, screws in through there, right? So you've already got the holes lined up and everything. Now this piece actually screws into the back through this way. So you want this to be removable so you have access to those screws. That's important, so there's that piece. And you've got the uh, instrument panel area which is going to tuck in to this portion here. And then this piece right here, which is very big, actually goes in right there. So this is gonna get cut down a significant amount. And uh, so those are the pieces of the cockpit. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, and this is a little bit easier on an overhead view, you can see my little Sharpie marks right there. So what I've done is just marked the actual, roughly the center point of the front canopy portion here on the cockpit. So I'm going to start by cutting this out. I might even just go like this and uh, basically just slowly fitting this into the aircraft to find out a good position and how we're going to support the thing. And as far as lining this all up, it's roughly sitting about here because the instrument panel the center console drops right into this area right there. So that's kind of the positioning. I'm just gonna start cutting this and see what we come up with for final shape. All right, so I think this may be a little bit hard to show you, but um, I got the front portion cut out. And now this section here at the front, uh, right now it's being pushed down. You can kind of see it right there. So what we need to do is we need to cut that uh, a fair bit because what I want to do is I want to put a screw in right here and that's going to screw into the front of the cockpit and hold this portion in place. Now that's going to make that come up a substantial amount. Now when you look at the actual scale pictures of the A10, uh, this portion right here on the side is actually all cut out so they are able to see through the cockpit right through that uh, that spot right there so we do have the ability to cut that out if needed but first thing I'm going to do is work on this front section again taking these steps slowly and uh, we're going to get this positioned this looks like it's kind of the right spot uh, scale wise now these tabs here on the bottom and bottom of the instrument cluster they do fit in right there. So we've got a little bit of messing around to do, but uh, next step is figuring out this front portion of the front portion of the cockpit. All right, so now that we've got the front portion fitting well, uh, you can see I cut the, the end off there so we can glue some wood on and, and do the screw thing that I was talking about. So now that we got that portion fitting well, we are moving on to the actual cockpit tub. So I've cut this side already and I've marked that side. So what that is, those marks there are basically a little bit wider than our flats right here. So I'm just, uh, again, starting off bigger and then we'll work our way in. Now one little tip when you're cutting these Skymaster tubs is use your fibered grinding disc. Uh, reason for that is you'll generally have less cracking of these cockpit tubs if you use that. If you use a grinding type system, um, it's gonna crack these tubs. These tubs are just uh, plastic, uh, vacuum molded plastic. So even if you use scissors, when you're cutting these initially, it'll, uh, it will, tend to chip this, but uh, when you get into the finer work, use those sanding discs and that'll help uh, keep things uh, undamaged. All right, so we pretty much have all of the items set up and ready for the cockpit. Now we've got a couple special items here. So number one is the Warbird Pilots uh, jet pilot with servo operating head. 
So these things are cool if you hook them up to the rudder channel, but uh, what makes them even cooler if you get the randomizer. So basically this thing, uh, you plug the guy's head into one of these channels and you can essentially um, make his head just move randomly. So it's a really cool effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into the Zykoi controller because it needs a signal. So when the gear is down, the guy's head will operate. So I'm going to uh, pull this plate back up just enough to get underneath there. And we're going to put a servo extension in and that servo extension is going to come out and then it's going to go into the cockpit area. All right guys, so now we'll go through the process of installing the cockpit here. So we've got the front piece just loosely sitting in there, not screwed in from the, uh, the front yet. The randomizer for the head unit is right there and you can see I've got the two plugins. So the, the white uh, or signal lead is right there. On our cockpit, we've got our extension lead that the pilot plugs into right there. So that is the lead that goes down to the randomizer for the head. So next thing we're gonna do is get the cockpit tub in here. And uh, that's the next thing to do, obviously. So we're gonna lift the air cylinder up. We're going to plug the, uh, the randomizer in and uh, that will be the next step for installing this stuff. All right, so we've screwed the cockpit in at the back here, right there. Front section has been screwed in place. So now everything here is nice and solid. So what we'll do now is we'll put the canopy on and uh, do those screws up. Now I have plugged in the servo lead there. We do have the air cylinder all ready to go. And uh, so we'll get the actual cockpit or canopy installed next. All right, so with the canopy installed, now this piece gets installed and screwed in from the back side there. All right, so I've been messing around with this little uh, rear <clears throat> flapper thing for a little while. Not overly impressed with, uh, with this. Um, if I raise this up any higher, it catches on the canopy. If I drop it down any lower, the canopy won't close. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this attachment that attaches this piece onto the canopy. And I'm just gonna put a little hole in the top here and screw this piece right down with a, an Allen key or a screw. So it'll make sure that this has a nice tight fit so it'll look more like it should and there'll just be one tiny little hole in the top. I think that's gonna be a way better solution and I'll be just be happier with, uh, with that. This is just an absolute crap show. So anyways, I'm gonna take that off and I'll show you guys the final result here. All right, so have changed this. Works out a lot better. We got a nice tight fit all the way around. I think that's a good idea. I would definitely do this again if I was building another one of these kits rather than having a little flapper thing. Uh, and I don't mind that one single little hole at all. And if you watch the action here, yeah, it just works way better. So I uh, got that installed. The air cylinder is installed. That's pretty straightforward. So now what we'll do is we'll put our pilot in and uh, I'm just gonna put a piece of safety wire around the back of the seat. I found that's generally a really good way to keep the pilot in because the safety wire is almost invisible. Then I just wrap it around his waist and give it a couple ties. Um, and that's uh, basically the cockpit install. Obviously we're gonna plug his uh, random head generator in and just kind of tuck it back there. All right guys, dude guy is installed. And he's getting ready to push some buttons there. So let's turn the plane on and check and confirm that his uh, head generator thing works. And there we go. So he's looking around. <laughs> That's cool. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, it's time for test run of the Swiwin. 140 twin engines on the A10. So just charging up the batteries. And just to show you the final setup here for the door latch. So it's a pretty simple system. Basically what I've got a ball joint on the front section there. Uh, just a piece of rod that's threaded on one end with a, a bend. And we didn't even need to make a hole in here. Basically, 
it just sits nicely in one of the former holes so worked out really really well actually really impressive nice and simple and uh, holds the door open so worked out good so we're just uh, charging batteries and we'll do the run up on these engines now i have gone through and uh, done the initial setup on these engines generally when i bring these engines in i uh, i go through them uh, do usually two test runs on them while adjusting all the parameters and then they get shipped out to the customers in this case I have not run these engines yet uh, ran another 140 previously so but I'm uh, not expecting anything crazy it's uh, the sweet winds just work they're absolutely awesome uh, in case you didn't know they're available on the lighter side of rc.com link down below and uh, great engines very happy with them Alright guys, as to be expected, the engines run like a finely tuned Swiss watch. Uh, no issues with the engines, I uh, ran them for about 5 minutes, extremely fuel efficient on this aircraft, very very exciting. I think we're going to get a 10 minute uh, ish flight on this, uh, on this A-10. Uh, restart was really quick and uh, got the acceleration speed easily to sub 4 seconds, about 3.6 seconds on these pair of twin engines. So. Very impressive, uh, awesome. All right guys, so with the test runs completed, uh, I've started going over the systems in the aircraft. Now, generally when I build an aircraft, there's always something at the end that always pops up, the gremlins, right? So we've had a gremlin pop up in this aircraft that I actually tested before and um, it's popped up. So we need to fix it, I'll tell you what it is. So first issue is, this all relates around the air cylinder that uh, operates the, uh, the canopy. So basically the air system in the, uh, that particular uh, cylinder needs restrictors. So we've got to add restrictors to the canopy air cylinder because it just absolutely slams up and slams down. Uh, definitely one of the reasons to use uh, linear actuators. So we need to add restrictors on the airlines. Now that's not really a huge deal to do, but uh, there's two Zykoi air valves that we used on the canopy. One of them was brand new. The other one was installed in a plane, never used, installed in this one. That one's giving us troubles. And when I tested it, when I first put it in, it was working fine but now it's not working. So basically the locks, and that's the canopy locks, so the locks will open, but they won't close. So what we need to do is we need to switch that out. We, uh, I've got a way to get a Jetronic valve, um, actually robbing it from another, another build, but we're gonna switch it out for a Jetronic valve, which I know will work, and, uh, but it's unfortunately buried 
in the airframe and it's really tough to get at. So I'm not gonna show any of that stuff to you guys. Essentially what we're gonna do is take apart the entire cockpit, take apart the tray, try and get access to it. Unfortunately, it's one of the back air valves right at the back of that plate we installed. So I'm gonna fix that. Once that's done, then we'll get into the final C of G of this plane and uh, just the final checks and balances. So very, very close guys, hang tight. All right guys, so we got the valve all switched out and here's what it looks like. So air cylinder works. And if you watch the locks here, air cylinder closes, locks come on. Locks open, air cylinder comes up. So now after that, we can close this thing back up. Now, once we get the tray back in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these lines off right here at the cylinder and we'll put some restrictors in there. They're just uh, little uh, things that go in line that have a really, really small hole. I'll show you those when we get them done. All right guys, so here's the restrictors and what they look like. So you basically have one end that is a normal end you can see there it's wide open the other end is just a tiny little pinhole so it slows air down in both directions so we're going to put one in both sides of that uh, canopy cylinder and hopefully that makes it more uh, <laughs> more scale and less scary no more slamming down so i'm going to get this put all back together and uh, get these things installed all right, so final result here works great. Uh, with those restrictors in place, it's a lot smoother, slower, more scale. The locks work now with that valve changed. Beautiful. All right, so we're just doing the final checks and balances on this aircraft. Um, it's, it's big, obviously. Uh, we need an extension here for the work table. And uh, we actually need the back end to be up a little bit when we do the C of G because um, the garage slopes like that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to do a gear cycle. So air has been filled up. Um, we're going to do the gear cycle. And then what's going to happen is we'll have the plane down. We'll support the plane. And then we're going to do a power cycle. So we'll put the, the on-off pin switch in, pull it back out, and just confirm that when it's sitting on the ground with its gear down, it starts up fine and doesn't cycle the gear funny. So step number one, gear cycle. Perfect, so we heard the locks lock the mains, the front door closed, gear down. Now we'll go down, and now all we're going to do is we're just going to turn the plane off, turn the plane back on, and just confirm that the gear stays down while we're supporting the plane, just in case. Okay, so up, and the plane's turning off, and the plane's turning back on. Yep. So that is a problem. Um, we're going to have to go into the Zykoi programmer and just confirm that our programming is set up properly. And uh, that's why you, why you check this stuff because you don't want to be having it sitting on the field ready for the maiden. You go to power it up in the gear cycle. So. And then just checking the C of G here. So it looks like we are roughly adding about two pounds of led to the nose. So when I programmed this, uh, SkyMaster gives you a C of G of 150 to 155. So I basically set it up right in the middle of the range. So we do have a little bit of play way there, but uh, so we're gonna add some weight to the nose and uh, get this thing sorted out. All right guys, so this is unfortunately one of those scenarios where things get changed a little bit. Um, basically we, Generally, when you're building an aircraft like this, it's better to have the weight in batteries than just dead weight. So previously, 
Uh, the way I set this up is we had our turbine batteries, which are nice and big, and then our receiver batteries, which are 2200 milliamp lipos. Uh, we need to add more weight. So the most logical way to do this is uh, basically increase battery size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two lipo batteries out of the system, uh, which is a bit of a downside because I wanted to use lipos on this aircraft, uh, but that's okay, we'll use life batteries. So the reason we're going to use these batteries, these Duralites, is they're larger in capacity, so 5,000 uh, milliamp batteries, and they're a lot heavier than those two cell lipos are. So we'll end up getting a lot more weight on these batteries. The downside is the balance leads are really short. We're gonna end up burying these in the aircraft, so gotta get uh, a couple balance extensions to make this uh, feasible to actually even do. And uh, we'll have to redo our little battery housing that we built in there. So what I'll probably end up doing is just putting a spacer, uh, like a foam spacer on either side of the batteries. Anyways, I need to play around with that stuff to get the CFG where it needs to be. So I will, uh, I'll mess around with this and kind of show you guys the final results. All right guys, so finally got the stuff sorted out. So we've got both of the turbine LiPo batteries right here. Uh, there's a hunk of foam jammed in there that takes up the space of the previous uh, lipos. Uh, I've got one of the large receiver batteries in the nose. Uh, I've siliconed a bunch of lead in the nose. And then there's this bag right here which is removable and we can adjust the weight. So that is all sorted out. Another one of the batteries is going to be installed right in this area right here. So we're just going to, uh, going to install that battery right there. So with all that done, we are tail heavy by 0.24 pounds. So that's roughly about 120 grams. So if we take this 112 gram one, put that on the nose, we are bang on. So it says nose heavy, but add zero pounds at correction point or whatever. So, so that basically sorts out our C of G. I've added a hole right here for the balance leads to come into. So we've extended the balance leads. Uh, this one, I bought a plug and we put the plug on. Uh, the other one here, I bought a bundle of wire and basically extended the balance lead. So this will be way too long, but at least it'll give nice options when we're charging to uh, pull these balance leads up through the, uh, the hole right there and be able to charge the batteries fairly easily. So now it's essentially just putting this stuff back together, uh, getting that battery installed. And uh, the reason I left this a little bit light um, and we have to add more weight is so we can put the weight in this area and make it removable, right? So we can still adjust the C of G backwards if we want to. Oh, and I forgot to show you this. Our final weight for the plane with all the weight installed is 62 pounds, empty of fuel. All right, and there we are. There is the final product. So we've got the turbines plugged in. We've got the receivers plugged in, our balance leads are extended and accessible right there. And the cover goes on no problem. So that worked out wonderfully. So happy with that. I'm glad we got the weight added with batteries, not necessarily all with lead. I'm not sure the final tally of the lead that we added. I think it was probably close to two and a half pounds, but uh, Anyways, it feels more appropriate to where the A-10 should be. So uh, when the A-10s are all assembled like this, the nose is not super light, um, not like a sports jet, but it's uh, it's quite nice and light on the nose. So anyways, we, it is easy to access those weights to remove more if we need to. Next thing we're gonna do is the gear cycle, the final thing. And I think the gear cycle uh, issue that we had earlier was just because the uh, gear channel was set up on the gear sequencer, so uh, I've just switched it to a bare channel now, and I think it's gonna fix it, so we're just gonna check that out, and we should be good to go. All right, guys, well, we've got some gremlins to deal with again on this A-10. Uh, the first issue we're having is 
Probably see my clamps right there. So one of the gear locks is leaking really, really badly. So I think we're either gonna have to take that cylinder apart or we're going to have to replace it. If I take those, uh, those forceps off, I can hear the air pouring out of there. So that's problem number one. Uh, problem number two, this Zykoi controller. It uh, doesn't matter what we, what we do, it seems to want to uh, start up in the gear up position. Uh, I know we've set up our valves properly, so we're going to have to figure that part out as well too. And uh, the front gear is not, uh, not really working that well, so we might have a pinch line somewhere. So, so unfortunately, uh, we've got a bunch of problems to deal with on this aircraft. Uh, that's the nature of the beast with air systems. They do work quite well. Uh, they do have their problems, but uh, we're going to make sure that obviously we get this one taken care of and up and running very, very well and reliable because we don't want to have any problems with this plane. All right, guys, and just a quick little update for you on the Gremlins with the A-10. So I figured out a couple different things. Uh, number one, I had the front gear and the main gear plugged in to number one and number two on the Zykoi sequencer. I think I've dealt with this before, I just forgot that I did deal with it. And uh, you've got to have, if you're using two valves, one for the main, one for the fronts, uh, you've got to have both of those valves in number one. It seems like when you power up the sequencer, what happens is it goes to number one, number two, it just doesn't jive with the Zykoi or the, the Jetronic valves. So I basically took a Y lead, plugged both of the, uh, the valves for the gear into channel number one, and it works beautifully. Um, the brake one, I just needed to reprogram or reset. Uh, one of the gear ones I also did reset. So to reset the Jetronic valves, you hold both the buttons down while you're powering things up, and then you let the buttons go. And uh, the cylinders, the, the locks on the wings, I took those apart and, uh, and basically cleaned them up, resealed them, and that solved the issues with the leaks on the wings. So I think that was all the gremlins. Um, anyways, guys, problem solved. So that's gonna be the end of the A10 build video, guys. I may do a follow-up. Other than that, we are very, very much done uh, just fixing the gremlins. So next thing that's in the queue, guys, is uh, this is the last video we're going to be filming in the shop. It's a little bit surreal. Uh, in about uh, three days from now, all of our stuff gets moved to the new house, and we will be starting uh, the finishing on our new house. And... Uh, the next build video probably will be the Huracan, which is my aircraft, and that will be filmed in a, a portion of our house, not my shop yet, or the garage, because it's not done. So it's gonna be an interesting uh, episodes coming up, guys. It should be fun. Uh, if you have any questions about the A-10, any suggestions, feel free to list the comment uh, down below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, guys. It helps the channel. And if you haven't done so already, it's free to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks, guys, for watching and supporting the channel. And we will see you next time.